Welcome back to the last day, day 30, of the B-Movie Drive-In Exploitation Challenge. Uh, this is the wrap-up video. So for the month of April, I completed 94 films. Didn't quite make 100. I blame the NBA playoffs for that, but any bottom lines, I didn't make it. But I did watch 73 first-time viewings, which is pretty good. So I was... I was pleasantly surprised. I, the year before, I think I had watched 68 films in total, so I exceeded my number from the previous year. Yeah, it's all in good fun. I mean, if you're interested in this kind of thing, then you can go over to DVD Talk Forums, and they run the um, they run challenges really throughout the year. You've got um, a Criterion Challenge, you got the B-Movie Exploitation Challenge, uh, and I think in July, they run a science fiction challenge, and then October is the big horror challenge. So it's, it's all good fun. There are gifts and giveaways for uh, meeting the checklists and the number of watches. So yesterday was the final day, and I got in one, two, three, five movies. Uh, first up... Run, Angel, Run, 1969. This is a biker film with William Smith, who is better known probably to most people as the, uh, the antagonist to Clint Eastwood in uh, any which way you can when they when they get into the big fight that ends up tearing up into the entire town. That was William Smith. Uh, apparently, he was known to have done, held, he's held like a world record in the number of sit-ups, like 50,000 or some ridiculous, 5,000 sit-ups. I don't know what the number was. It's ridiculous number of sit-ups. Yeah, he was good in this. This is his debut role as a, basically, he is a part of a bank biker gang that uh, he sells out his group for money, essentially. And then they go on, then he goes on the lamb and they hunt him down. Very, very interesting film, very 1960s. It was made in 69. You know, you've got Easy Rider and a whole slew of um, biker films. This one made millions of dollars. It made a lot, a lot of money. I, I, well in excess of its budget. It's got a Joe Bob Briggs commentary track, which I've not listened to. That's predominantly the main reason why I bought it. So, yeah. So that's Run, Angel, Run. Then I got into some Del Tenney action here. Horror of Beach Party, which is has the famous or infamous uh, creature with the hot dogs in its mouth. Uh, it's just a it's just a hilarious low budget romp. It could have been made by uh, Ed Wood. You know, it's it's one of those deals. It's just silly. It's just a, a, an endless series of um, uh, 60s beach music, kids playing around, romping around the beach, and then you've got the hot dog monster coming up out of the water, chasing them around. It's hilarious. Uh, pretty, pretty entertaining, and it's a quick watch. It's like 75 minutes. Then I checked out the other 1964 film, which is The Curse of the Living Corpse. Uh, which is much, much better. Um, it actually has is the debut of Roy Scheider. Uh, and, it, and in this film, you've got a group of family members who are fighting over an inheritance. And the inheritance has stipulations uh, that each member, there, all these, all these as, as is a lot of these type of movies, you've got all the characters are... Uh, self-absorbed, ungrateful little asses. And uh, basically the, the guy that left the inheritance knows that they're all little shits. So he's, he's given them tasks in order to get the inheritance. And of course, what happens is you get the typical, someone decides to murder everybody up the food chain so they can and get all the inheritance. Um, but it's good moving. Well done, actually. And uh, Roy Schotter was uh, fun to watch in his first role. A very baby-faced Roy Scheider. So, and there's two, um, this is a very budget DVD release. I think I picked this up for like nine bucks, but it's got two audio commentary tracks from the producers. So I'll check that out soon. 
Then I watched uh, Murder Lust. I first heard about this through uh, Celluloid Terror. Uh, Murder Lust is a 1985, I think it's a direct VHS serial killer film. And it's a very good movie. Highly, I highly recommend it. I think you can watch it on YouTube if you're interested. But it's a character study. It's not. It's not. A, there's not a lot of gore. It, it doesn't play the gore angle. It plays more of the characterization of the serial killer, who's a uh, basically he's a psychologist majored in art psychology, and he's a Sunday school teacher by day, and then a uh, uh, misogynist by night. He just he's he's got a real problem with women and he uh, strangles them and kills them. But it's not a gory film. It's 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 really focuses mainly on the characterization and uh, I thought it was very interesting. And it's done in kind of a docudrama style, which gives it an added kind of uh, gritty realism to it. So I, I would definitely recommend it. Six out of ten. And then I watched uh, the, the, the double feature, which is, uh, I'm not sure what to tell you about this, The Perfect Nightmare. It's, it's a surreal uh, mind trip. Um, you know, I think <laughs> Cellular Terror, I think, was at a loss for words as well in his review of this some time ago. And I am as well. I, I don't know what to tell you other than it's two guys that um, uh, it's really a kind of a, another character study. But here you've got two guys that are they have a lot of inner demons, no doubt about it. Uh, and, and they're going through a series of what I call uh, paranormal, a paranormal situation. You've got uh, uh, lights that are that are flashing and hitting them at certain odd periods of, of time and uh, they're trying to figure out what these bizarre uh, flashes and lights are are and then they get involved then they just fall into this hole this underground tunnel area that uh, reveals even more that's going on it's 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 a very strange film and it it doesn't give you any kind of conclusive ending it's uh, it's very trippy so uh, I don't know what to think of it. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and I, I give it a five, six out of ten as well. I just, I just don't know what to think of it. I'm at a loss. So, and that's not typical. I usually have some opinion on it. Um, but yeah, fascinating, interesting. I, I, I really want to listen to the audio commentaries on both of these to try to figure out what the hell. What the hell they were, what the intent of, particularly on the perfect nightmare. So, that wraps up my uh, B movie exploitation challenge for the month of April. Uh, I will probably be, well, I'll be doing reviews. I'll be going back and showing my collection. I got to finish that. Uh, and I may be doing um, a kind of a first in, first out, which is I've got all my films. DVDs and Blu-rays logged uh, by per the data purchase and what I paid for them and all that shit. And so I've sorted them. And uh, I may be doing for the month of May this, trying to, to walk, go back and watch all the unwatched films or DVDs, Blu-rays that are the oldest. Starting with the oldest and working forward. Uh, just something different. So, because it's kind of, it's a, it's, it's a, kind of a default way to do a randomizer but that's that's one thing I was thinking about doing uh, and then I'll post some videos about it anyway I appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed the series thanks